Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our discussion about pulmonology or pulmonary medicine. In previous videos, we have finished talking about obstructive lung diseases. We have talked about bronchial asthma, chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis, and even bronchiolitis. Today, we'll compare between obstructive and restrictive lung disease. This is by far the most important comparison in the entire pulmonology playlist. With that being said, now let's get started. Obstructive lung disease, restrictive lung disease. Obstructive, the problem is more proximal in the bronchi or bronchioles. In restrictive, the problem is more distal in the lung parenchyma. This is not entirely accurate because, for example, bronchiectasis is more distal. Bronchiolitis is more distal. Emphysema is even more distal, so it's kind of okay. Breathing abnormalities. The patient cannot get the air out. In restrictive lung disease, the patient cannot get the air in. His or her lungs are restricted from filling. Example, bronchial asthma, COPD, bronchiectasis, and bronchiolitis. COPD is an umbrella term that includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Restrictive lung disease has two main subtypes. Extrinsic, which is not the lung's fault, and intrinsic, which is the lung's fault. Extrinsic could be the problem in a chest wall, neurological defect, or respiratory center, or even the abdomen such as in case of ascites or organomegaly. Intrinsic lung fibrosis is the most common example, and it could be occupational, could be autoimmune, could be drug-induced, or could be idiopathic, which means the pathology of the idiots, or we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology, i.e. unknown cause. Because sophisticated doctors don't just, like, be honest and say, I don't know, they just say, it's idiopathic, go figure. Obstructive lung disease, FEV1 is low. How about restrictive? It's also low. How about FVC? Low in both of them. FEV1 to FVC ratio is low in obstructive, normal or high in restrictive. Total lung capacity, high or normal in cases of obstructive. That's why we call them barrel chest. It's low in restrictive. Vital capacity is low in both of them, whether you have an obstructive lung disease or a restrictive lung disease. In either case, you have a pulmonary disease and your vital capacity is going to be low. Residual volume is high in obstructive. Again, that's why they have barrel chest and that's why we call them blue bloaters. It's low in restrictive. DLCO. In obstructive, it's normal or low. In restrictive, it depends. If it's extrinsic, i.e. it's not the lung's fault, DLCO is normal. If it's the lung's fault, it's low. How about the AA gradient? Is high, it's wide in gradient. Here it depends. Again, if it's extrinsic, it's going to be normal. If the lung is normal, the AA gradient is normal. But if the lung is having a problem, AA gradient is widened or increased. Ventilation in obstructive, there is hypoventilation. They are bloaters. They have barrel chest. They cannot get the air out. <sighs> That's why they get wheezing. But in restrictive lung disease, they hyperventilate. Since the lung is restricted from filling, as a reflexive compensation, they will hyperventilate to try to get more oxygen in. If you are struggling to learn about Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinovirus, Staph, and Streptin E. coli, check out this website called Picmonic, Pictured Mnemonics, and they are awesome. You can support my channel by going to patreon.com slash medicosis. Even $1 makes a difference. Thank you in advance. You will get my post notes, PDF notes, cases, audio notes, depending on your tier, and they are organized in Dropbox folders. Please subscribe and hit the bell and smash like. You can follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.